with the recent snooping scandals coming to light, how would you address uh, the privacy and surveillance in the context of AI development? Well, I mean, that's, that's a battle I've given up on. I mean, I, I, as I said earlier, I assume my phone is tapped. I can probably say hello to Mr. Modi right now if you want. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, Hello so that's that's just that's 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 a battle I've given up. Uh, they're probably listening into this and saying, "Okay, what is he saying out there?" Um, but on a more serious note, I think these are actually very important things, and I think you need to establish rules with regards to uh, privacy of citizens, privacy of data, uh, you know, and and protection of data of our people. As, as a nation and as individuals. Thank you, thank you. A has the potential to disrupt employment patterns. How do you ensure that A doesn't leave behind those who might lose their jobs due to automation? Frankly, I am not one of those people who believes that AI is going to massively decrease jobs. I don't buy that argument, okay. right? I think that some jobs will be lost and many more jobs will be created. Right? And I think we've seen this before. I was reading, actually, uh, some accounts of when the steam engine, which you mentioned, uh, was invented. People were saying it's going to destroy all jobs. You know, the petrol engine was seen as something that would destroy all jobs. Computers were seen as something that will destroy all jobs. So we've seen this before. And none of these technologies have actually destroyed jobs. I think they have reallocated jobs. They have uh, redistributed them. But I don't think I don't think we need to be worried about massive job losses. I might be wrong, but that's how I sure. think about it. What do you think, Saeed, on this uh, aspect uh, as a Silicon Valley mover and shaker funding start A startups every day, every other day? You know, I, I believe I agree with uh, the comments said, but uh, I don't think this AI is as new as everybody says. Like someone said on the panel, the chatbot has been here for 30 years. I think this is a little smarter uh, chatbot. And I think it will improve productivity. I think it will improve, uh, like let's say if you have a team of 10 people to do a startup, you could accomplish more with the 10 people. The realm of A ethics, how do you balance the need for innovation with the responsibility to prevent biases and discrimination. What do you think, Rahul? Human beings don't have a very good record <laughs> of being ethical. I mean, World War II, World War I, these are not, you know, human beings are not that ethical. Um, but I think these are things that, you know, as Sam said earlier, that we need to sit down, uh, not just as individuals or nation states, but as the planet as a whole and discuss these things and, and try and understand the possible repercussions. I mean, these type of technologies have existed before. There is a precedent. It's not, AI is not, you know, the first time a, a technology is dangerous. Nuclear weapons, for example, are, uh, are an example that were very dangerous and were sort of managed reasonably effectively. So I'm sure uh, that these questions can be tackled. I think we should, we should be optimistic about things like AI. And also what, what you mentioned, um, we should be realistic. I mean, I'm not... I'm also not entirely convinced that, you know, it's going to transform the world completely and everything's going to go upside down. So I think there's a little bit of balance that is required in when you look at these things. Education plays a wider ro role in the A literacy. So how do you think uh, we can integrate A education as part of the Indian curriculum? Uh, maybe uh, if you become the Prime Minister of India in 2024, what skills you think India should prioritize for future generations? I mean, for me, you know, I, I'm sitting here today and a lot of my time is spent back home in uh, the rural environment. So it's a, it's, a, it's a cultural sort of huge transition, you know, seeing, uh, having this type of discussion and then seeing the reality of the Indian education system and our school system and stuff like that. I think on the higher education side, you know, on the engineering side uh, and the technical side, our education system is reasonable. It's good. Uh, and it's competitive with any other, uh, you know, top economy of the world. I think where a lot of work needs to be done is the sort of primary education, the secondary education, uh, education for poorer people, weaker, weaker sections of society. I think that's where uh, a lot of focus needs to be put. And then also I feel that India needs to 
think about production and manufacturing and the type of skills that go into production and manufacturing, which frankly we haven't paid as much attention as we should uh, and I think is almost as critical as the services. Maybe before moving to the last question, I want to ask uh, one question to both of you. In the global artificial intelligence race, uh, how would you position India as a leader while ensuring ethical and responsible development? Maybe Saeed. Uh, unit, uh, I think uh, you mentioned it quite frankly. Uh, technology can be very positive and if you use it the wrong way, it can be very negative. You know, like cloning, you could say uh, it has been controlled pretty well. And, uh, you know, gene technology the same way. So I really feel uh, we would have enough discipline just to control the negative part of it and focus on the positive. That's all I can add. I think on the, on the India and AI question, I think India and China have the largest data set on the planet. And I think any AI system is going to operate on that data. We have a huge resource. We have to understand what that resource is. And we have to make sure that we uh, benefit from that resource. It's also very easy to dissipate that resource. So we have to think carefully about data, how we are going to utilize that data, who that data belongs to in terms of individuals, state, etc. So we have to do a lot of thinking along those lines. Uh, we, need to, we need to make sure that we understand the repercussions of misusing or incorrect use of, of that data. Today, I don't think India as a country has quite understood the wealth of its own data. We don't, we don't really understand it. Right? And, and I worry that you know, we will take decisions uh, with regards to our data that will then become problems later. Right? We want to make sure that India understands that this is actually the nation's wealth, the people's wealth, and it needs to be treated with care and with vision. At, at the same time, you can have, you know, I'll use the Saudi Arabia example again. You can have oil, all the oil in the world, but if you don't have the internal combustion engine, it's meaningless, right? So you, it's not good enough just to have the data. You also need to be able to process the data. You also need to be in the game when it comes to AI and things like that that allow you to monetize, allow you to use the data. So we need to have a strategy on both those things. That has the new oil. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. think. Uh, so the last but not least, uh, the very important one, the saying hello to Modi part. So the Pegasus, <laughs> the Pegasus snooping saga. <laughs> Hi, Modi. <laughs> the Pegasus snooping saga. Oh, you're I laughing, like but, but it's true. Huh? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not joking. So you had Pegasus on your phone. Pegasus snooping saga allegedly involving the BJP government. What are your thoughts about it? Certainly, when such invasive surveillance tactics undermine the democratic fabric of any nation. So what measures should be taken to protect the privacy of Indian citizens or any, any country should take? I think, uh, you know, once uh, a new dispensation comes to power in India, this is something that we will have to actually regulate very carefully. Because right now it's completely open season. Anybody can do, you know, they can do whatever they want with, uh, with people's data, with tapping phones and stuff. And I think we need to study this and, and create some clear rules whereby the rights of people's information, rights of people's privacy is, is maintained and protected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. And uh, in fact, as a summary, I want to tell uh, Rahul's vision. With Rahul's vision, in the recent Karnataka government manifesto, they have included a thousand crore fund for entrepreneurship, for particularly to help people of scheduled caste and tribe so which is a great thing so i think yesterday even talking to rahul he mentioned about how we can promote innovation entrepreneurship not at the communities of not having so great privileges mm -hmm.